in for just battle. so convenient that everything just works out every single time. You know what I mean? I don't believe any of this. I don't believe any of this for a second. I believe that maybe you got some guys hired and stuff, and you may or may not got footage at the inside of a scam. I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it. It's a lot of fucking effort that goes in for a, for one guy. You know what I mean? Like a, a YouTube channel is gonna be able to do all of this. Liza, ma, uh, we're just trying to. We're, this, I, this this Mark Rober, he's a huge YouTuber. He's come up with a bunch of these glitter bomb kind of busting bad guy videos and. The last two that he's come out with are there's been some breakdown videos of, of whether or not those videos are faked or not. And I've watched a couple of them. And I do strongly believe that a lot of these videos, like when they drop the glitter bomb off at people's houses, the, they're actors that are involved that pull it in just so perfectly, put the camera square in their face, stare at it just wonderfully until it's like nobody steals something and like brings it home. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, I just, I question it. I question it all. You know what I mean? And so this guy, this guy drops this video yesterday at 9.7 million views. You know what I mean? And most of you have probably already seen it. I just don't believe it. I just, it's so convenient. You know what I mean? Everything's so convenient. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we're trying to, He, they're just now infiltrating the call center. But of course, there was a major blow to the operation. Then another major blow. Just so convenient that there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Or a climax. An intro, a climax, and a conclusion. Just so perfect. And an hour later, we had a man on the inside. And by the way, now that we're inside, I'll give you a very quick crash course on what we've learned about how these scam centers operate after watching them for so long. First of all, 90% of the victims are 65 years old or above. I believe that. I don't understand that. Are you, are you, I don't understand all of this. They really only make calls during the U.S. working day hours and not on the weekends, because that maximizes their chance the person who picks up will be retired. This is why you never get scam calls on Sunday. They don't have anyone even working the phones. In fact, many of them have an auto-dial prompt that says press 1 if you're over 65 years old and if you press anything else it just hangs up the most common scam is the amazon refund scam but they also pretend to be microsoft mcafee norton antivirus the irs and your bank and on and on it's always changing but it's also always something you've heard of to try and build trust right out of the gate if you want to know how much they make well that information unfortunately is securely held on the boss's computer so we can't get to it oh what do you know so convenient so convenient how much money they make is just, ah, oh, it just, come on. How am I supposed I to believe if that? If you had access to the internal cameras, you could just watch the boss type his password, and then you'd be able to access their master tracking spreadsheets. But? Which is what we did, and how we know, these large call centers All make right. $60,000 per day. That's right. $18 million a year. An opener will take the initial calls and they make an average of $7,000 a month. Then if they keep the victim on the phone long enough, they hand it over to a closer and they make on average $15,000 a month. They never say the word scam or victim, instead referring to them as sales and customers. That way they just seem more like a normal office. Although what I think does that job more convincingly are all the walls plastered with inspirational corporate words like energy or management or process so that's your crash course on how they operate and the FTC has put out a list of four signs to help spot a scam and four things you can do to protect against them and I'll link to it in the video description and so now without further ado we kicked things off with the stink bomb water bottle and while that was marinating he went to the bathroom and dropped off the hand soap and the special medication with the boss's name written on the front and it didn't take long for us to get our first hit on the smell what was great though is they all kind of covered their noses subtly in silence so the people next to them wouldn't feel accused well for the most part <laughs> then a few minutes later we had our first bathroom customer who clearly doesn't wash her hands after using the restroom but then we had a second chance with an apparently more hygienic scammer and this time we struck pay dirt as he comes out trying to figure out what the heck just happened and five minutes later you can see him still trying to work it out and not long after that we got our first mention of the special package in the bathroom The audio cut out here, but our agent told us they were laughing and wondering how the boss could possibly leave that lying around. Although it certainly doesn't feel too far off brand given he uses this as his profile pic on Facebook. Oh my god. And at this point, our agent placed and then triggered the time. You know, I don't. Who doesn't wash their hands? Girl, I'm telling you, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say like 70% of people. They say at least 20% of everyone. Uh-uh. 
I think it's so, so much higher than that. So, so much higher than that. And the reason I say that is because like when I'm in the bathroom, there's, I can't, no, unless if, if, unless someone's in the washroom, like, like washes their, like I'll be pissing and a guy will literally just go from the urinal, go outside. He'll leave. I'll be pissing. I'll go, I'll go to wash my hands. Then somebody will wash their hands. But if you stand there, I guarantee you, I, I'm going to say 70% of people don't wash their hands. Uh, men, anyways, I can't judge by women. But even if you just stand outside the bathroom, listen to how long it takes the toilet to flush. Whoosh, and then someone walks out the door. I'm like, it took you five seconds to walk from the stall to the door. Where was the hand? There's no hand washing. No hand washing. I'm telling you, I'm, and I'm not joking. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm no fucking saint. I don't wash my hands all the time. I wash my hands when I'm at home maybe like twice or three times, you know, out of the course of an entire day. Uh, but it's like if you go out or am I, I'm out somewhere and I'm touching other people or I've got guests or, you know, you wash your hands all the time, all the time. I have a child. It's like, you know how much I have to reinforce washing your hands? It's nasty, the amount of boogers and shit and amount of things that get collected, you know? So... 70% of that must be North America, Canada. I don't know. I can't speak about anywhere else or at least in my little, my little hole, but I travel a lot. Like we travel a lot and, uh, and like it is, it's a lot of people that don't wash their hands. It's like gross, actually really gross. Delay countdown on the cockroach rat and smoke bomb traps. So we can now safely make his Go getaway. Oh, you okay? You're safe. Yeah. I thought they were just fine. And since they, of course, have no idea what's about to happen, they're still just casually talking about the bathroom. Get away, please. Get away, and then a few moments later, how the hell can you make anything out of that? Because this guy notices a cockroach and nopes his way out of there. And then he's quickly followed by the second dude. And I love it, because now you just randomly see cockroaches start coming in frame. And so now that they know what they're up against, they call in the reinforcements with a mop. But it looks like he missed one, or two, or three, actually four. Let's scratch that, five. And then as it perfectly on cue, right as the mop guy finishes his cleanup, the smoke begins. And this causes quite a commotion and draws quite a crowd, and it takes them a while, but they're eventually able to pinpoint the source of the smoke and gingerly take it off the premises. Followed soon thereafter by our rat friends. And this is possibly my favorite clip of the whole night, where you see a cockroach lead the way and wander all around as they argue and try and make sense of what in the world is possibly happening. And by this point, you can tell the boss is pretty sure they're... I just think it's so convenient that they bring it, like, right here. You know, everybody, like, right in frame and everything. And you know what I mean? Point, you... Why did you carry that all the way out to a table in another sure room they're... just to stare at it? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you take it out of the building, put it in the garbage can? Like, you know what I mean? Something, you know? But no, let's just take it from a, the content, the spot where it was. Let's take it to another room, attack, put it down any sense of doubt, in the middle of the room, in the middle of the room in front of the camera. I just doubt, 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 doubt. So are these like hacked cameras or place cameras? Because how? E both, either way. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're hacked cameras. That's what I mean. Like hacked cameras. They can do all this shit, but they can't just shut this place down. <laughs> you know, hacked. Package. And they almost opened it right there. But I guess with everything else that had already happened so far that night, they took it downstairs. And then this happened. <laughs> And how, okay, again, 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 okay. So you get a package at work, okay? You get a package at work. It's it's a mysterious package. Do you and every colleague in the office go into the, go into a room and just open it in the garage? No, no. You know what I mean? Like it just works perfectly that there's nine people standing around this thing in a perfect circle and they all get punked at the exact same time i just you guys give up oh yeah thirsty for more like they were ready for it they were ready for it the thing comes off and they've already got the can they've already got their cameras running one i bet you it's a glitter bomb 
That guy's already recording. This guy's already recording. So after our incredibly successful special operation, we waited to see what the response would be. And we didn't have to wait long. Yesterday, those cuss words sent Aunt Solutions a package bomb and it exploded and there was a bad smell and sprinkler water or whatever it was. These guys are playing good with us. I am reminding you guys, they must be in between us. We don't even know. And now we had them because they were paranoid and they didn't know which of their employees might have been compromised. Check the lunch boxes, pocket bags, shoes, ladies purse as well. Even check the water, whether there's some color mixed in it. I assume he's referring to the soap dye here, but be cautious guys, seriously. They came to bad word all of us, and they are still trying to bust us. After that, there were a few more death threats, so we didn't think it was safe enough to launch our attacks on the other three centers to try and get them shut down. But the beautiful thing is, we didn't have to. Big centers in Kolkata and Delhi are closed from today, as well as Monday, as per the information I got from all my friends. We had created enough confusion and mass panic that not only did the other three centers get shut they down, they just shut down entire all operations. All across India shut down for a few days. This is too. all staged. Up, this is all staged. Those tiny cockroaches stopped two million dollars from going from the victims to the scumbags. And I would say that's wow, Mr. Rober. Well done. You get a Nobel Peace Prize, sir. You and your glitter have changed the the face of mankind forever. So after all that, we're sort of in a good news, bad news situation here. The good news is that because of some developments we've been involved in, the fourth center here is going to be raided by the authorities in India and shut down very, very soon. The because of the work we did with our glitter bomb. Developments we've been involved in. The four Fourth center here is going to be raided by no the authorities way. in India and shut down very, very soon. The bad news is that these other three are still very operational. And for reasons I can't say here, we don't have the same option to get them shut down like we do on the fourth one. Now, as we so thankfully today, with 9.7 million views, Mark Rober was able to change the world. Video. Wow. So let's see what we can God. do. And depending on exactly I'm a little cynical, happens, but I'll either post a follow-up video here on my He'll post another video for sure. YouTube channel or on my other social channels. So subscribe and all that stuff if you want to stay in the loop. Glitter bombs and cockroaches are just harmless entertainment. But our best chance of working together to shut these guys down for good is by shining huh. a light to foster some accountability. Thanks for your help. Now let's make Betsy proud. Betsy, please consider sharing. There's... I want to thank NordVPN for their... Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Yeah, these guys do serious damage to these clowns. Yeah, I'm sure. Yep, I'm sure. Mark Rober did it. He did it. He saved the world today, and I'm very proud of him. I'm very proud of him. Uh, it, I, I have no idea. Maybe he did. The thing is, is this entire video, I, I don't know, the entire video, but I just don't, there's no way. Watch, look at, watch the, uh, um, fake glitter bomb package. Let's see if I can find YouTuber and engineer Mark Rober builds incredible things on his YouTube channel where he claims over 4.5 million subscribers. And his latest project took over the internet. In a video titled Package Thief vs. Glitter Bomb Trap, Mark expresses how sick and tired he is of package thieves. And if you've ever been in a situation like this, you just sort of feel violated. And then I took this to the police, and even with the video evidence, they said it's just not worth their time to look into. So then you also feel powerless. So he decided to take matters into his own hands. So he, like, literally takes evidence of, of a crime to the police, and they can't do anything. Like, who, what kind of police are these? these? These are not, like, are these the police from every, like, I know what you did last summer movie? Like, help, there's somebody chasing me. Help, help. <gasps> I'm sure there is, ma'am. <gasps> You know what I mean? Like, he assembled a well, some parts of the video are being outed as staged. BuzzFeed shares some. Oh, let's be real, this is where the video should have started at two minutes. Inconsistencies emailed to them by a man named Peter Logan. Just check out these screenshots he took from a quick Zillow search. The article says, after watching the video several times much more closely, Peter realized that the second package thief's car, a black Ford Focus, was also parked outside Cece's house in several other shots. Zooming in, Logan was able to read the address on the third thief's house, 
Google it and confirm it was indeed Stacy's neighbor. Leading him, he wrote to come to the opinion that the whole video was a put on, that the package thieves were in on the gag. But Peter wasn't the only person to point this out. Sean tweeted, don't know if I'm being overly skeptical, but the glitter bomb package thief video just Oh, oh good thing this guy tweeted this because that's a what? fact. They were partly right. Mark issued an apology. Oh my god. Is this video on like 75% speed? Cause she's like fucking slow. And an explanation. Mark Rover gave an explanation about the glitter bomb. They're package thieves tried to get away with stealing packages like fuck she's on some the post basically says that some of the participants who were willing to put the packages on their doorsteps staged the theft so that they could receive the compensation mark was offering for successful recovery of the footage Mark says that he didn't know that the two reactions were fake and has since removed them. He apologized, saying that he should have caught it in the first place and that it will never happen again. His team's just so big. Though, Mark says are real and his booby trap That's Valium, yeah. So maybe we so should good. I was throw the whole thing out. But what do you Yeah, yeah. Anyways, anyways, clearly because that guy tweeted that it's fake, it's obviously fake. Um, I just think it's way too much. It's just way too much. You know what I mean? Like, who goes through this much effort? And maybe I'm just wrong. I'm definitely jealous. Let's be real. Um, but I don't know. I think it's frigged. I think it's frigged. I think the whole glitter bomb thing is frigged. And then I think him sending agents into Indian telemarketing scam operations is even faker than that. So who knows man the guy's got millions of dollars he used to work for nasa so you know he's got things that access to things that i've never heard of so i could only imagine